having a meeting? Just with myself. Okay. Those are the best ones. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank
Okay. Um, there's serious work to be done. Cry, we are So I uh, did it. Anybody get anything done other than aside from me? <laughs> yeah. Did anybody get anything? Done? Yeah. Carol. All right. You guys get chance. All right. It's magical. It's magical what can be can ha happen when you just sit down and like face it. You know. So um, does uh now here comes the oh I forgot to say right. So why do we have this and what is this? Um, so watch for work is actually a play. I forgot to tell you. It's been so long. So it's a play. So we did the action uh, and the dialogue. So we just did the action, and now we're gonna do the dialogue, which is like we do it together. So if anybody has any questions, you get you understand. See? Yeah. Right. So if anybody has any questions about your work, your creative process, um, there it is. Here we are. Yeah, man. What's your name? Carmelo. Carmelo. Yeah. It's, uh, Okay, that I, uh, I didn't know what this was, and I think I'm a teacher. Okay. And I went to Cambridge. Okay. And I love it. Okay. Great, great. I, I love teaching. Did you, say, sure, did you get, what do you teach? Well, I teach English in high school. Uh-huh. I just had to teach English. One of my boys is Double Consciousness in the Veil. Right. And where they're writing about Invisible Man. Oh, great. Um, and so, anyway, I, uh, you know, wanted to go home and not do anything, right. and then I heard about this, and I came here and reading their responses, it was just the perfect combination oh, so of, uh, you know, elements, so yeah, so oh, thank so you. Th well, yeah. thanks for coming. Yeah. I, I mean, sometimes, yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's what it's for, basically, that's why I sit here. I've been doing this for, Carol knows, because she's been coming, for like nine years, or over nine years, I basically sit in the lobby and work, and invite people to hang out and work also. And then, but the, the second part, this part right now, is talk, allowing people to talk about their creative process, and we can hopefully help them find a way to keep going. But so you're you're grading papers, so that's kind of like you just go down and like say good. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I, oh, I know. <laughs> right. Right. And help them like develop their critical thinking. Yeah. 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 Thank you. We'll come back sometime and you, you know, have time to work on your own work too, because we welcome that. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks, Camilla. Anybody else? Have any? Are you asking people to share what they just uh, put down? Well, yeah, yeah. More, more about maybe, I mean, if you want to, but also, mostly if people are having some, like, are in a tricky place with their creative process. Like, um, for example, a question we get a lot is, how, I have a lot of different projects. How do I choose which one I should be working on? Like that. And we talk about that. Um, the reason why I don't ask people so much to share what they've written is because then it gets to be sort of like the writing Olympics. And basically it gets a little competitive. You know, like, oh, see, I wrote something brilliant. And did you? And the person goes, well, no, I just wrote, you know, no, 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 no. you know, that kind of thing. So, so that, so that's why we don't go there. But if you're feeling a strong urge to respect, I, uh, I, I, I don't understand my thoughts. I came here totally by chance, huh? on a whim, and so I was inspired by the 20 minutes to. I mean, something was written. I'm happy right. to share it, but not, not to. Engaging. It's not in competition. Right, it's right. It's a byproduct of that period of time. Uh -huh. Do you have a writing practice at home? Or uh, outside oh, of this? I, I've been writing, yeah. Yeah, uh huh. And as far as the process is concerned, I'd say just like anything, let the heart guide, um, so long as the motivation and the intent is sound and solid. And then whatever, if you need a pumpkin or chair in a flat surface, just to afford yourself kind of the space and time right. in which to, to write and then just let it go. You know, I try to get in the way. Right, or, right. Just to clear a path and, and remove obstructions. Like, right. not overcomplicate, but just always back to the heart. You know, simple and plain, basic kind of just 
kind of where it comes from. Right. 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 That's, that's great. I love what you said about making time for your practice, you know, and getting out of the way. What's your name? My name is Jed. J E D. J E D. So Jed is talking about making time for the process and getting out of the way, which are two really, really super important things. Um, a lot of us, a lot of other things that come before our process, our, our work process, our creative process. We put a lot of things before that. So a lot of us, like, we got kids, we got day jobs or whatever, we got shit to do, and a lot of stuff comes before that. So it's really important to make time for your process and to work on getting out of the way. Yeah, when inspired, you know, I, um, I don't, like, say 10 minutes a day, or, like, there's right. no formula or format. It's, right. I give thanks every day. Right. And I draw inspiration either from the natural world. Right. Or even from Topsy Turvy headlines. Or, mm -hmm. Because ultimately, as far as the heart, even in the apparent complications and distractions, like, like lessons in life, you take them where you can get them. So, right. as per inspiration, you'd be amazed where it can come from, where you can find it. So when inspired, uh, it shouldn't be a task or a burden. It should be, for me, it's a great joy, it's a great relief. And so I just give thanks for that. You know, that's really great. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah, Matthew? Yeah, What's your name? Sharif? Okay, hey Sharif. How are you doing? Right. So I've been working, I've been what I've been writing, I've had it in my head for a couple of years. Right. And uh, it's been hard. Like, I would sit down and uh, couldn't ever get it out. And I think I was waiting with my friend to see a play, and we had all this time. So I started, it just came to me. It was kind of like the, the voices of the characters were flowing through me, and I, I had, I could just easily write it down. And I know this has happened only once before in my life. Right. And the question is, at some point, at some point last time, they s I stopped hearing them, mm -hmm. and uh, that's and I was told that's where the work begins. Like you know, that's the real work. Like you know, keep it going. Right. Um, so I guess the question is, uh, tools and to to keep going after that. I don't know if it's an inspiration or if the you know when when the characters stop talking. Right. 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 Did everybody hear Sharif? When the characters stop talking, so he's had. Um, moments in his in his writing time uh, career where he sits down and the words come and they flow and it's all cool and good you know um, and then there are times when those words stop and he was told that's where the work begins and so we want to talk about what kind of tools might be helpful to keeping going even when the voices aren't just flowing even when it's not flowing how do you go when there's no flow, right? Right, right, and which is like, um, it's great, because it rhymes. I love when things rhyme, but I tell myself that they actually make, they actually are meaningful. So how do you go when there is no flow? That's when you become a pro. That's what being a professional is, right? So we write when there is flow, and we write when there is no flow. Right? And so you, maybe when you're writing when there's flow, but you have great confidence, right? I am fabulous, I am, this is all going nicely. And when there's no flow, maybe you have less confidence. Oh no, oh no. Huh? So what do you do? You take little tiny steps, right? You sit down at your writing space, and Jen, you have your practice where, okay, you, maybe you, you work around, your, um, you don't sit down at a certain time. For me, personally, sit down, turn on that timer. And because in my experience, the muse is kind of like, you know what I mean? It's a relationship you're having with your higher power, right? And your higher power will meet you halfway. Your higher power, you're going to do all the work, in my experience, right? So you've got to show your higher power, I'm showing up. It's like dating. You know, you're going to tech, if you're not going to return those tech, you know, if you're not going to show up, right? Your date is going to get, start to get the feeling that you don't really care for them, right? The higher power will just go to someone else who's showing up more regularly, right? And, and be there for them. So the higher power is giving you a gift with the flow, and then you reciprocate the gift by 
doing a little work on your own. Show up every day, maybe use a timer, not your phone. I just used my phone today because I forgot my regular timer. Uh, a kitchen timer is better. Yeah. Oh, you have like sand in the hourglass. <laughs> That's so old school, yo. That's like, okay, so you sand in the hourglass. That works. That works great. So you, is it a big one or like the oh, Wicked Witch or oh, the little one? Oh, it's 20 minutes? That's so cool. I did, oh, what color is the sand? It's yellow. It's yellow. Like yellow? Uh, like her coat? Like Big Bird yellow. <laughs> and what color are the... the oh, it's all black. It's all black. How nice. Okay, so you have one of these, yeah. right? You sit down and, and sit with your work. And, and the work is not realizing that when it's done. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Or, like, you can look at it every second. Like I do sometimes. And then the beautiful thing is when it is done. And you're like, now I, I, I did my bit today. So that's what you can do. Start by showing up every day for 20 minutes. When the flow isn't happening. And just write anything. Okay? And then you're going to be a professional. And that's what a pro... I mean, really, do you, do you watch any sports or... Well, I mean, that's what pros do. Or actors, right? I mean, actor pro... You know, right? Actors, you know what? What, you're not feeling it tonight? I'm not going to go on because I'm not feeling it, yo. You go, you go on. Musicians, Martha knows. We play, you know, right? Sometimes you don't feel like it. You got to do it. You show up anyway. And that's what it means to be... To be serious about your vows. You've taken a vow to your craft, right? Yeah. I was Take a step forward. Take a step. Keep going. You'll be there. You'll get through it. There you go. Right? I'm trying to instill in myself that it's okay to fail. It's okay to fail. Right. Just keep showing up. It is, it is it's difficult. It's difficult. But it's okay because we all do fail. We still show up. That's right. You give it your best effort. You know? Then you give yourself a chance to win big. Right? Anybody else? Question? Yes. Hi. Rewriting. Yes, you do. Who loves rewriting? Does anybody love? Yes. Da 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 da
no, no. You love rewriting. Yeah, you know what's gonna be. You love rewriting, right? You just do. Because because rewriting is where you get to right? Yeah, you get to show that you're that you're serious. Rewriting, have any of you ever been in uh, in a relationship? Right? Okay. That's like right? That's like rewriting. It's not just like, oh, <laughs> no, it's like, now we're serious. We're going to talk about this shit. We're going to talk about, like, what isn't working, right? Oh, maybe I don't like what you're wearing today. We're going to have a conversation about that. It's a relationship. So you're going to have a relationship with your work. So you need to rewrite. So you're going to print it out, single-sided, and then you're going to, have you ever read it aloud? No. Okay. You, you, I, you have a voice. So, and you can read, I'm guessing, yes, brilliantly, I'm sure. So you're going to maybe read your work aloud, okay? Uh, in one go, aloud, and you you have like a room yeah. or a place you have, great. So you're going to read it aloud in one go in your room, preferably standing up. Because then you're in your body, and they're characters, right? Yeah, I know, it sounds, it's, it's, it's exhausting already, right? But did anybody run the marathon yesterday? No, so it's kind of like that. <laughs> but there are no people cheering you along. Every go, go, go. No, there's just you and the spirit, and you guys are working together. Okay? So this is rewriting. So you're reading it along, right? And you reach a part that is like, I don't understand what's going on here. Circle it. Keep going. And you read it all the way through. You've got all kinds of marks on it when you're done. And that's a roadmap to rewriting. Okay? Okay? And that's the first step. It's so important to learn to rewrite your work on your own. Okay? That, that's not to discount the help that brilliant editors and dramaturgs and you know can give you, right? But you really want to learn to rewrite your work by yourself. You don't want to have to wait until the room is filled with brilliant actors, for example, if you're writing a play. I can't hear, but some of my students are like, I can't hear my play unless I hire these fabulous actors to read it. You want to be able to hear your play first on your own. It's like a composer. She hears her work, right? She can hear her work in her head. That's what we want to develop. And then when you hand it off to actors, you'll be employing amazing amplifiers who amplify and do brilliant things with your work. But you want to have done a couple of rewrites before you hand it off to actors. Right? Okay? Okay, so it's, it's, it's going to be fun. Rewriting is fun. The hard work you've done, the hardest part of it is writing. The hard, writing is harder. Okay? Okay? Good. And come back. Come back because we can keep talking. And we'll be like those people at the marathon. Go! Go! Everybody yeah. give your name, because I see you around yeah. town. Jim? Yes. Jim. Do you write biographies or backstories for your characters? Right. Pretty much everything you know about them is in the play is itself. It in the play? Or does that change from project to project? It depends. It depends. It depends. Sometimes we write something and, and you really, you as a writer, need to know what happened when the kid was seven years old, you know? Or an actor might say, what happened when the kid was seven years old? And you might provide that to him, right? I mean, you might provide it to the actor outside of the text, or maybe the telling of it is very important to the dramatic unfolding of your play. Okay? So, I usually only include what's going to be dramatically relevant. Now, it gets us into an area about exposition, right? Where one character's just saying, back in the day when I was the blah, 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 blah. And I know, these are like, uh, it's like torture, right? It's torture, unless it's attached to, the, to dramatic necessity. You understand what I'm saying? So a character starts talking and relating some information about herself because she wants something. Not because she wants the audience to know, that's not, that's kind of lame exposition, but she wants something from the other characters. And that's why she's telling this information. You see, so it's very active. It's not just the playwright wants the audience to know something about these characters. 
Does that make sense? So, so I would say, sure, if you want to write some backstories, if that's going to help you hear the characters, if that's going to help you write them more vividly, sure, write some backstory. Only include in the play what's going to be dramatically relevant. Right? Okay. Yeah. Like we know, like in Medea. Medea talk, might talk about where she comes from. Because she's trying to maybe uh, tell Creon, you know, this is, you know, this is my backstory because this is why I want, you know. So she's using it as fuel. She's not just telling the audience her stuff. Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, what's your name? Tatiana. Tatiana? Yeah. Cool. I had a question. I'm working on a, a play for class. Right. Uh, I'm a sure. graduate student in playwriting at Columbia. Oh, great. Okay. Um, and I, we have this prompt, and I've been working with this through line, and okay. I've gotten lost writing different scenes kind of out of order. Right. And I'm wondering if you had any advice about how to find your way back to your through line. Okay. Okay, so the, uh, do you like the prompt? I do, yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. Okay. So how do you find your way back to your through line? Okay, great. Um, what you haven't mentioned is any character. Are there characters in your line? <laughs> yes, there are characters. Right, I know, you laugh. It's funny, right? <laughs> Are there any characters? I know, they're characters. So what if they... I mean, do they have names? Yes. Uh, so one of them, I have it split up into kind of two parts. Okay. Uh, one is like a play within a play. Okay. Uh, and the other side of it is the rehearsal. Okay. So we see the actors. Uh, okay. So Rivka and Leo are my two characters that I'm working with. Great. Okay, so what do they want? Um, they want to perform this play while also understanding the backstory of where their characters are coming from. Okay. Uh, the play that they're performing is like a bat mitzvah. Okay. Okay. Um, and so they're like 23 year olds playing 13 year olds and they're okay. trying to get into that headspace. And they're also uh, in a relationship. Okay. And what is, what's in their way? What's their obstacle? Um, I think they they are having a, a hard time getting, because they're so clouded with everything going on in the world as it is now for, right uh, at age 23-ish, right. they're having trouble uh, relating to a character that would be in the headspace of a 13. Okay, so what are they going to do to overcome their obstacle? Uh, so far I just have them talking it out with each other. Okay. Uh, different ways that they can get deeper with their characters. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe some interaction with the audience, but I'm not sure. Uh-huh. Okay, so you notice everything I'm asking you is about your characters and what they're doing. And I'm not really asking you about you know, the plot, because they're connected, they're so connected, but a lot of times we lose our way when we're just thinking about one of those things, right? We're just thinking about the characters, or we're just thinking about the plot. And what was clear to me is that spending more time on the characters, so what will they need to, it's a play about a bat mitzvah or a bar mitzvah, it's a play about a bat mitzvah, and do you know what that play is? Uh, I'm still trying to figure that out. Okay, okay, okay. So, I would suggest that you just spend a lot of time talking to your characters. That would help. Figure out that play that they're performing. Okay, get specific, because I think you're, you're, you're kind of specific about the big picture things, but when it comes to what the characters are actually doing. Like, this, like for example, if I wanted to remember what it was like to be 13, what would I do? I don't know. Could you go online and maybe buy something off of eBay that might have been a toy or something that you had when you were 13? You know, I don't know what toys people have when they're 13. But do um, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Get a sensory object. Get something. Instead of just doing this, talking, we, I encourage people to get their characters to start to be active 
all through their body, and not just from the neck up. There are a lot of places where people are just talking, wah, wah, wah. They're not really doing anything, except talking, and yes, talking is an action, but, yeah. yeah. Okay? So if they're doing something, right, they're actually doing something. For example, you think of, do you know the play Hamlet? Hamlet by that guy. So the play opens. How does the play open? Um, oh man, it's been a while since I've read Hamlet. Uh, okay. Is it like, a, is it their birthday party? No. Is there, uh, are they outside? Yes. They're outside. They're outside, right? You say, yeah, yeah. So they're outside and they're like, who goes there? Whatever the first, I don't know what, right? And they're outside and they're on watch, right? Some, some miscellaneous dudes are on watch because there's been a ghost sighted and they're wondering yeah. what the fuck, right? <laughs> and so they're standing around, they're not just talking, blah, blah, blah. They're on the parapet. It's foggy. They're going, oh, shit, oh, there's a ghost, oh, I don't know, right? It's very active. You see, Shakespeare set this, these two guys asking these important questions, who am I and what am I doing here? He put them in an exciting place and it revealed so much about uh, the questions of the play. You see what I'm saying? They weren't just talking, okay? So think about what your characters might be doing, actively doing, to take them back to their, the time when they were 13 years old, okay? Are there any articles of clothing that they still wear that they might take out of a, a, a trunk or a closet? Are there TV shows that they might watch um, or they might remember together? Okay? Okay? Active, active, active. Keep it active. Because it's a play. We forget. It's a play. Thanks, though. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Anybody else? Lots of different bits and pieces, and lots of different inter stories. Uh huh. It's a, it's a family, like family dynamic. Right. You know, right. Family dysfunction. Okay. Um, but um, it's, if it's all in the name of one particular kind of goal. Right. Um, and each one of these things could easily be like a vignette. If right. I wanted, if mm -hmm. you wanted to, but I don't want it to do that. Right. You know? Right. I want it to be um, maybe a musical, mm -hmm. maybe a play, mm -hmm. maybe a play with a lot of music. But I, and I understand that the, each piece of action has to, in the song, you know, that you write, has to continue moving the action forward. Right. You know, so that you remain invested in the character. Right. Otherwise, it's just like, how right. do I care about this right. thing? But one of the things is, how do you hang, I'm trying to figure out how to hang, um, you know, this one particular idea that um, is like the culmination of everything, right. and how to bring that forward in the beginning so that we know what this might be about. Right, you know right, I'm right. I, I see, I see so what you that's, mean. That's, that's I see what very mean. tricky. Yeah, yeah. Because there's many ways to do it. Right, right. Know, but I'm not sure um, what the strongest way to do it. Or do you keep it as a surprise and then it's, do you see right. what I mean? But even if it's, even if it's a surprise, there should still be a little hint of something to come. True, yeah. true, true. Um, That's structure, isn't it? That is structure. Yeah, but it's also character involvement. It's all, it's all the same thing. I mean, I think the, it's, it's mo most helpful for me if we see all the things as interconnected. Right. Okay? So we can take out for the moment the fact that people say that songs in a musical have to move the story forward. Right. So we just take out those for a set right. and just look at those, the story, the, story, yeah. the characters what they want, what they want more than anything, right? So if we were to say, if just to take this conversation, very much so Martha wants to successfully write her play slash musical. And in the end, she successfully writes her play slash musical. It's okay to know what the characters want at the beginning. Right. It's okay. 
you take all the music, not all the music, but like, uh, I don't know, what's the musical that you like? Just give me a recording one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
YouTube right now. Well, well you could, I mean, you could, if you've recorded a song, if you've written a song, you've copyrighted it, you've re recorded it, or had a recording made, you could put it on SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Well, you've got, no, it's not, in two minutes. You've got to go online and you can't figure that out. I mean, you really just, go online, SoundCloud, and, yeah, and it, it'll be a fine. Yes, exactly. It's not that difficult. It's just, you just can upload your songs to SoundCloud. Getting your work out there is very important. You want to just upload your songs to SoundCloud. That's good. I mean, or you can, uh, you know, brush off your musical chops and perform it yourself. You can do both. Yeah. But it's, it's, um, it's sound for you. Oh, that's, that's good fun. That's good fun. Run, run, run. Good? So when will we be back? I know. November 26th. November 26th. So we'll be back November 26th at 5 p.m. And, uh, anything else we need to say? I know. Well, you know, keep working. Keep writing. I sure will. Okay, thanks for coming in. Thank you.